A profound intellectual and multiple disabilities mean that a, a person has a complex range of difficulties and disabilities. They will include a significant learning disability. They may include a range of physical impairments. They very well include epilepsy, some sensory disturbance. And all in all, that person has major challenges in getting a good quality of life. She has to cling to life. Um, because of the complexity of the medical conditions, two life-threatening conditions, the epilepsy and the kidneys, um, affects her totally. Of course, the biggest effect, apart from those two medical things, is that she has profound learning disabilities. She can only communicate with her eyes and eyebrows. Because she has difficulty in communicating what she needs and wishes, she often gets very angry. If somebody has very complex needs, there are big issues for the family about how they can continue to cope, about who will care and support their child if they're no longer around, and also whether they themselves will be fit and well and able to carry on caring, assuming hopefully that a son or daughter lives into middle or even old age. When uh, she was diagnosed as having this very rare condition and that she would be seriously disabled for the rest of her life. I, I couldn't believe it, I couldn't understand it, I didn't want it and I went through all the normal things that you do as a mum. The other overwhelming feeling is loss. You have lost the much wished for child that you thought you were going to have and your expectations are smashed. So you're, you're in bereavement and loss and you're in that for life. It does get better, um, you work through it, but the milestones are pretty hard. My friends' children growing up, I'm watching them, watching them, you know, fly the nest, go to university, get married, we'll never be grandparents. That's another bereavement. We've just had the birthday, 40, you know, for somebody who was given a week to live, and here she is, 40, and celebrating. Person-centred planning around the individual and personal budgets is making a difference. Families may, for example, benefit from all the developments in new technology, assistive technology, communication aids, having the right wheelchair, the right hoist, the right adaptation to your housing, if necessary, makes a huge difference. Quite early on, both my husband and I decided we wanted to give our daughter the gift of independence. Tremendously difficult when they have disabilities. And she, she'd lived in um, local authority provision for a while and it wasn't working. So we wanted to give her true independence. And somebody said to us, well, well why don't you set her up in a home of our own? And we thought, why not? Why not? Victoria became a first tenant, uh, along with her flatmate, uh, the first, perhaps in the country, to have a tenancy in her own name. She owns everything in this house, and she is the employer of, a, of, a, of the people who support her 24 hours. Everybody can express choice, they can express happiness, they can express unhappiness. Many people with profound and multiple learning disabilities actually have very good lives. They have positive relationships, they enjoy going out, they have activities that give them pleasure. And a package of care and support ought to reinforce the abilities as well as the care needs of the person concerned. Very often I think we under expect what people with the most complex needs can actually enjoy and from what they can benefit in their everyday life. Sometimes she can be extremely happy and give you the most wonderful smile which brightens up a room and other times she, she can be quite sad and I think it's because of all the things that are going on in her body and she feels quite low. But by and large she's, she's a very positive person and I think a lot of the time she is happy and she likes her own home, she likes being here. We don't find our children a burden, but the lack of appropriate support can be burdensome. Staff here are very skilled in, in, in picking up her mood and, and her health really of the day. Um, if she's up for it, then she'll be out and about doing her shopping at Tesco's 
or she might go out for lunch to the pub, which is very good. Um, she might go swimming in the afternoon or she might just go out for a walk down the canal. It depends very much on, on what she, how she is. So every day is different. The difference is they'll, they'll go at Victoria's pace and they'll interpret what they think she wants and needs. What families value most of all are positive attitudes, respect, dignity, choice, maximum control. You realise that you are in it for life. So you need to be good to yourself and your family to carry on being a lifelong carer. There isn't a job description, there isn't a pension at the end of it. You can't opt out, but it does go on for their life. So you do need another life out there other than disability. And I highly recommend yoga, Argentine tango and fun. You do need a lot of fun. We're positive and we just, you know, when we can, we really enjoy life. That's how you cope.